Now, this week, uh, Constitution Hill launched an exhibition titled The Provenance, Part 2. The award-winning fashion designer, Luka Nyumdingi, the uh, exhibition centers on black consciousness, Bantu indigeneity, and uh, the archival preservation in South Africa. Dingi displays the inner workings of his designs process by sharing his uh, creative process. He makes viewers aware of how difficult it is to bring a concept to life. He joins us now to tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, Lucanio, a very good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. I'm well, thanks, and yourself? Fantastic. I mean, before we speak about this, allow me to take you back to uh, last year when you won the Amiri Award. I mean, uh, what did that mean for you, and, and uh, just how did that help you in just, uh, you know, s sending your, your, your art, your words, overseas and beyond? I think being part of any international institution such as the Amiri Prize really allows our independent brand to essentially bring more visibility to a global market. So it's essentially being trying to use the networks to see how we can steadily build our business in the most sustainable way possible. So it's been extraordinary. And um, with that prize can, comes a mentorship. So we've been really leaning onto them to see how our brand and business can um, grow to its fullest potential. And, and how, how is that transition being in not just the financial aspect of uh, the Amiri Prize itself, but also the support that you had over the year? Uh, how has that helped in, in just improving your art, as it were? Yeah, incredibly so. I think what I've realized is that businesses' networks and when you have quite a strong infrastructure within an institution such as the Amiri Prize or even the LVMH Prize, it really brings a lot of um, connections to you and you're really able to utilize them with really strong strategy. And what we've done has been to um, be transparent about the needs that our business needs and um, they've been able to really support us within those different areas. So it's, um, aside from the fund, it really comes down to the networks and the networks that they're essentially able to open up to you. Mm. And but I mean, I know um, apart from the fund, as you say, but a hundred thousand US dollars goes a long way, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> no, thank you, so I, I want to um, touch on that particular uh, exhibition that won the award. I mean, you were talking about back to Africa and, and then just juxtaposing it to what we're talking about today. You've always been quite conscious about uh, the continent, about blackness, about Africanness. Why is that? Um, our stories matter, you know, I think there's definitely a renaissance when I think about my peers and just really looking at arts and culture right now. There's a lot of strong African designers that are making um, a positive contribution within a larger conversation of, um, of art, of design. And I think it's just really important to really highlight our history, where we come from. And I've always wanted to use the Lukanyam Dingi brand as an institution and a vessel to retell these stories in a very contemporary way, but also collaborating with like-minded peers and um, creatives. Mm. Now talk to us about the provenance, part two. What can we expect? So and, and especially talking about black consciousness. Of course. So the Providence Part 2 is an exhibition that is being held at um, the Constitutional Hill in Johannesburg. And what we really wanted to do within this season was to focus on three different themes being textiles, literature, and as well as music. And it was essentially started off as a personal pursuit of really trying to understand what are the fundamentals of these themes within the context of black culture within South Africa and what are their origins. So what we wanted to do was to really ex expand our research looking over the last 200 years as to how the provenance of these three distinct themes that we have within our exhibition coexist within Bantu heritage. So that is something that we really wanted to highlight. So even with literature, looking at Love Dog Press and the Missionary School and seeing the remarkable history that it is, and also understanding through our research that it really has become a national treasure. And it's a space in an institution that so many notable alumni like Gavin Becky and Zeke mm -hmm. Matthews and Steve Biko had leaned onto. And we feel as though by bringing visibility and highlighting the importance of this institution, we can be in a position of really seeing how important it is and why it's essentially a cultural, a cultural um, national treasure to our country. 
One would, um, and with all due respect, say it's easier through literature to tell a story of black consciousness, of, of, of black um, uh, indigenous stories. But how, mm. how easy, hard is it to tell it through art? Uh, you know, because I'm sure, as we both would agree, that art is open to interpretation. So as an artist, uh, what does it take mm. to display that story, that black consciousness, uh, not mm. uh, through, through art, but not through words? Mm. Well, well, essentially, so much of our art within the context of Provenance Part 2 mm. comes down to archives and research and being mm. able to use literature as a way to communicate this. So even within the exhibition within itself, there's definitely stories that we really wanted to highlight where people can get full context as to the foundation of these specific three themes that we've highlighted. So although art can be considered as a medium of, of um, paintings or photography, we didn't necessarily want it to pertain it that way. Mm. We really wanted to use archiving and the spirit of research, the practice of research as a way to retell these important stories. Mm. And, and I mean, in terms of just the, 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 the support and the reception from the South African public, how has it been to uh, this kind of art that you've been displaying? Well, for us, it's about partnerships and specifically mm. thinking about the province part two. We really wanted to be mindful and strategic as to how we can work with our fellow contemporary peers with, that are within the shared industry of arts and culture. So we collaborated with um, co-curator Banela Koza, who's also an artist and a gallerist that's based in Rosebank. And we also partnered with The Manor, who, um, which is essentially founded by Trevor Stederman. And for us, it was seeing how they can also bring in those um, specific networks and ingenuity to really make the bigger picture of this important project a lot more impactful. So um, the reception of it has been really incredible since the opening night, and we really look forward to seeing how we can um, bring in more activations within the space of Constitutional Hill, where it's currently being exhibited. And um, because the exhibition is essentially going to be running for three months, we really have a lot of opportunity to really bring a lot more um, highlights within the exhibition as a whole. And, and just how has the rest of the world been responding to your art? I mean, uh, uh, take it as far back as 2022, uh, uh, your exhibitions uh, uh, at Saks, uh, uh, you know, and, and also just how the markets outside Africa, outside South Africa, responds to this kind of different art. Well, I mean, the label's predominantly known for clothing. So mm -hmm. it really is our first time. Well, it's our, we're slowly getting into the world of, of art. But when I think of the Lukanyam Dingu brand, although it is something that is global and is predominantly known for our clothing design, yeah. we really want to see how we can um, branch out into different parts of arts and culture just so we don't necessarily pertain our point of view within the context of clothing design. But the way that the world has really been receptive, like the global market has been receptive to the brand as a whole, has been really, really incredible. Mm. And just finally then, uh, Lucanio, on, on, on that point, as I, I mean, as you say, the brand is more known for fashion designing uh, internationally and otherwise. How do you balance that? You know, or is it just a, an expression of your art in many different forms? Well, I think it comes down to strategy. I think it also comes down to really um, having a good team and partnerships. These things are always achieved through collaboration. And um, that's something that I've always really understood from the very beginning of having a business within the context of fashion design. It's so interdependent on other people. And that's a sentiment that I'm continuously trying to implement with every project that we have within the Lukanyam Dingy brand.